Now, it says, verse 18, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became. So, we have a situation that was naturally hopeless. That's the reality of it. A naturally hopeless situation. You've been to the best of doctors and they have told you it's hopeless. You, you've looked at the different statistics and you look at your relationship and it looks hopeless. You look at your finances. You've been to the bankruptcy attorney. You've been, you've spoken to everybody and it just appears hopeless. But the Bible said concerning Abraham, even though he was faced with a situation that was hopeless, that he continued, even though it was naturally hopeless, but he continued to hope in God, even though it was naturally hopeless. He continued to hope in God, even though it was naturally hopeless. He continued to hope in God, even though it was naturally hopeless. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatsoever may be your situation, whatsoever may be your circumstance, you must continue to hope. Who, contrary to hope, in hope believed. So because he believed, in hope he believed, he became. How did he become? He, there was no hope. In the natural, there was no hope. A 90-year-old woman having a child, it, it looks really hopeless. He looks really hopeless. And the brother too is not really far from her. He's 100 years old. It was hopeless. But he continued to hope. And how did he continue to hope? He spoke it. He spoke it. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. He's going about the whole city, the whole town, his whole community. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. You? Okay. We'll see. He said, he said he's going to have a child. Did you hear him? He's going to have a child. Did you see his wife? Did you know his wife? She may look good, but she's 90. Ooh. She's going to have a child. But Abraham, Abraham kept saying, I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. Nobody could take that song away from his mouth. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a child. And that's how he became a father. You've got to be bold in declaring the promises of God. You've got to be bold in declaring the promises of God. Look around you. Look around this this uh, this sanctuary where we are. You may look around and you see the empty chairs. I've already seen a long time ago this place being filled. I've seen it. I believe it. I know that it will manifest in this your time. And that's why I'm telling you so that when you see it, you don't run up to me and say, Pastor, this place is filled. Yes, I knew that a long time ago. You may not be seeing the reality of it now, but I've already seen it. I'm already thinking of where are we going next? We're already thinking about where are we going next? Once this place is all filled up, where else are we going? Because we haven't gotten up to where we are going. You remember, we have this plaque here that tells you where our destination is. So we know we are very clear as to where we are going. So we see it every day. We put it in our eye gate. We see it all the time. We confess it all the time. We speak it all the time. Why am I sharing this with you? So that you can begin to use the same principles in your life. Don't look at the natural. 
to determine what you're going to believe, look to what God said. It was a word of God to us that this is where we're going. Take your time and look at the plaque over there. And therefore, I'm not making plan for what I see right now. I'm making plan for what he's telling me, where he's taking me. Oh, can I get an amen from somebody? Abraham kept saying, I am going to have a child. I am going to have a child. You can laugh. You can smile. You can do whatever. You can sneak up behind me. But I am going to have a child. And the Bible said, and he became a father. He became a father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. The Bible said in verse 19, not being weak in faith, he did not consider the natural circumstances. His own body already dead. So that don't make a mistake that maybe something was still happening there. He said his body was already dead. Since he was about 100 years old, and he did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that he, fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Let's read it in the Amplified. You know what, let me just do it in the, in the message translation. We call Abraham father not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God says to Abraham, I've set you up as a father of many nations. I love those words, I've set you up. Some of you don't realize that God is setting you up for some great and mighty things. You don't, you just, you, you're looking at your situation right now, you're so focused on your situation and your circumstances, and you don't see the promotion that is coming. But I've come to tell you there is a promotion coming. There is a promotion coming. There is a promotion coming. Oh, can I get an email from somebody? Is there any believer in the house? There is a promotion coming. There is a promotion coming. In the name of Jesus, there is a promotion coming. No matter what situation or circumstance that you may find yourself right now, there is a promotion coming. In the name of Jesus, there's going to be a lifting up for somebody in this place. If it is you, just say amen. There's going to be a lifting up of somebody in the name of Jesus. So God is just going to take you to another realm in the name of Jesus. And then at that time you look back and say, wow, so this was all a preparation for where I am going in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give God praise. You need to begin to prepare for the success that God has for you. You need to begin to prepare for the promotion that God has for you. You need to begin to prepare for the day that you're not going to have any pain in your body. You need to have a plan of what you are going to be doing. You need to have that plan of how you're going to be walking the streets of Albany. How you're going to be walking the streets of us connected and just telling people about the goodness and the mercy of God in the name of Jesus. God is not doing these things so that you just sit on your or you just sit and do nothing with it but for you to share it. Share that good news in the name of Jesus. God is not healing you just to heal you for healing's sake but so that you can go out there and you can tell somebody, I was there. Let me tell you how I got out of it. The doctors told me, they even gave me a time that I was going to die. But God said, you shall not die, but you shall live. I held on to the word of God. I kept co confessing the promise of God. And you share that with somebody. You encourage somebody with that. You lift them up. You give them hope. Where they seem hope and escape. In the name of Jesus. If God can do it for me, he will do it for you. If God can do it for Abraham, he will do it for you. You know, the reason why we share testimony is not just so that we just, it's not just because we want to share stories. It's not just because we want to use it as an opportunity to gossip. No, the reason is so that when I share a testimony, it becomes a spirit of prophecy. Amen. Glory, house of prayer, I'm challenging you. Amen. I'm challenging you. That let you, I want you to know that your words are so powerful. Amen. I want you to understand the power that is in your word. 
And because your word is so powerful, I need you to begin to use that word, to use it for yourself and to use it for the circumstances and the environment that is around you. You are a world changer. You change your environment. You don't conform to your environment. You change the environment in the name of Jesus. Let's assume you walk into your house and somehow, somewhere, this TV station just happens to be on this channel. You look at it and you are disgusted at the channel. What do you do? You change the channel. Thank you. You change the channel. When you look at circumstances around you, don't join them in complaining about any circumstance because you have the power to change the circumstance in the name of Jesus. When they are complaining about the job, you are telling them that I thank God for this job. I thank God for this job. If anybody is bothering you on your job, you say, I thank God even for the supervisor in the name of Jesus because there was somebody in this in this place that a supervisor was bothering her and we began to pray well we don't pray any evil to happen to anybody no we actually pray that she will get a promotion but she got her promotion and then she left and when she left guess what then our own now has a time of peace and a time of joy on her job in the name of Jesus hallelujah you are a world changer you change your circumstances that is why you cannot afford to spend time talking about your circumstances it's not because i don't want to hear about your circumstances but i really need to focus your attention on your goal where you're going you cannot keep your eyes away from that goal your eyes must be upon the goal your eyes must be upon the goal because you are going to get there you are destined for greatness you are empowered to fulfill your your destiny because you have uh, an intimate relationship with God. Uh, therefore, you transform your life uh, and you transform lives around you and you positively influence your society. I just told you the mission of Glory House of Prayer. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have it on the walls. You need to know it. Hallelujah. Now, now, where did we get up to? When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe in glory house of prayer. We're going to have a big family. Amen. Amen. So be ready when your family comes in. Amen. Amen. Be prepared for your family when they come in. Amen. That's why anybody that's working in Glory House of Prayer right now, we walk in excellence. Amen. Because we are prepared for the day that we're going to have a lot more to deal with. But we're already perfecting it. We are ready. Somebody say we are ready. We are, we are ready. ready. We are ready. And we have announced to God that we are ready. We've covered all the bases. He said we should, we should make room. We've made the room. And we are ready for the expansion. Amen. We are ready for the growth. Amen. And it is going to happen in the name of Jesus. Thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 19. Abraham did not focus on his own impotence and say it's hopeless. This 100-year-old body will never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God will make good on what he had said. Amen. That's why it is said Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. But it's not just Abraham, it's also us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless. Amen. The sacrifice Jesus made us fit for God, set us right with God. Somebody say hope in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. Thank you, Lord. Abraham believed God. And the Bible said it was accounted to him for righteousness. 
I like the part that said that he was fully convinced. Another translation said he was fully persuaded. The problem with most of us is that we are not convinced. We are not persuaded. We are not fully convinced. Sometimes we are convinced. Sometimes we are convinced. But some days when the ache and the pain is so strong, it's kind of like challenging to be fully convinced. Amen. But I've come to get you to the point where the aches and the pains will not determine what you believe. Amen. I'm not saying that I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm not acknowledging the aches and the pains. It's real, and I know that it's real. I want you to acknowledge more the word of God yeah. than the word of the pain. Thank you. I want you to I, work, I want you to focus your attention on the word of God in Amen. spite of what the pain is saying. It's two different voices speaking to you. The voice of the pain and the voice of God. Thank and you. whose report will you believe? You must believe the report of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what the doctors have told you, hope in God. Somebody say hope in God. 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 Romans 5.5 5 says, now hope does not disappoint. Mm. Hope does not disappoint. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It's, it's, it's a much, uh, uh, the Amplified gives us a better idea of what is being said here. Because you, you've had hope that did not manifest. You truly hoped. You believed you have a confident expectation that something was going to happen and it did not happen. But the Bible is saying that hope does not disappoint. So how come that it didn't happen at that time if hope does not disappoint? Now, look, take, go with me to the, to the Amplified. And the Amplified used a word that changes the whole dynamic of it. It says such hope. So there is a different kind of hope that does not disappoint. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So now we need to go back and find out what kind of hope is he talking about? Such hope does not disappoint. So what kind of hope does not disappoint? Because we've gone through the situations and circumstances that we had the hope and things did not manifest. And go with me to verse 1. Let's start from verse 1, chapter 5, verse 1. So we're trying to find out what kind of hope does not disappoint. He says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom, this is, this is it, this is it, through whom we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So when your hope is in the glory of God, that hope will not disappoint in the name of Jesus because the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. So much it has been shed abroad in your heart. So even when you are squeezed, I'm borrowing this from Pastor Precious, she loves to say that. He said, when you are squeezed, what comes out? When I squeeze you, what's going to come out is what you have on your inside. So don't tell me that, oh, it's because I stepped on your toe. That's why you had to do that now. Because that's what you have on your inside. So it is whatever you have on your inside that comes out. But when you have so much love, so much love, even when somebody steps on your toe, you still make an excuse for them. I'm not suggesting you leave your toe there. When you see them coming again, you make sure you, turn, you pull your toe away because you still got to be wise with this thing. Say amen. But you say maybe they just, they were not just looking at the right place. And I, 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 I'm like, Pastor, I forgive you. Even before you do it, I forgive you. Amen. Somebody say, somebody say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
So that's the hope that does not disappoint. Hope that is in the glory of God. Hope that, uh, uh, that comes through the love of God. That's the hope that never disappoints. Let's go back to our anchor scripture. Hmm. Let's go back to our anchor scripture. We started from Colossians chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. Let's look at the words that are used in here. It says, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but have now been revealed to the saints. To them, God will to make known what are the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The first thing that I want to define here is what is a mystery? A mystery, it is something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. It's a mystery. When somebody sits down in front of the auditorium, not even looking back, and receives a download from heaven that somebody's knee is being healed, it's a mystery. I, 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 I don't know. All I know is that God speaks like that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. When Pastor Precious told me that she received that download, I quickly pulled out my phone. I said, maybe God sent me a text. Maybe God sent mine to me in a text. I checked my phone and God didn't send me a text yet. Amen. To God be the glory. I don't know, but God speaks to you. And God speaks to me. Amen. And God begins to download. I, I declare upon you Amen. that you will have creative ideas in the name of Jesus. Ideas that you will suggest to your boss. Ideas that you will suggest to your supervisor that will take you to the next level in the name of Jesus. Thank ideas you. that will take your business to the next level in the name of Jesus. Just by a download from heaven. Amen. Just one download from heaven makes all the difference uh, in the name of Jesus. He said it's a mystery. It's a mystery. We, we, it's a, a mystery, something that is difficult or impossible to explain or to understand. And, and the doctor is looking at you and wondering, uh, how come you say you're not going to die? When I am telling you, I went to school, I spent, uh, how many years did they spend in school? I spent 12 years, I don't know, they just in school for such a long time. I spent 12 years in school. I have all these plaques, all these certificates. I did my MRI. I did my CAT scan. I have 30 years of experience. How come you're going to tell me you're not going to die when I say you're going to die? But God said, you're not going to die. Amen. You're going to live. You're going to live. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery when they're going to look at the same card scan again and they're going to see something different. He said it's a mystery that has been hidden from ages and from generations. But now that mystery has been revealed to you. Amen. He said to them, God will to make known what are the riches of his glory. Oh, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Oh, the mystery was hidden. Now the mystery has been revealed to you. Somebody say, Christ in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. The glory of God is a mystery. And, and the wisdom of God is a mystery. And God has revealed them to us, the saints. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 10. And, and let's even read verse 9. Let's read verse 9. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of many things that God has prepared for those who love him. You cannot even fathom the depth of what God has prepared for you. Oh, I need you to enter into what God has already prepared for you. Somebody shout, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's not because of anything that you have done. We read about Abraham. It's not because of anything that Abraham did. God just said Abraham up. It's not because of anything that you have done. God just loves you. Amen. Amen. Somebody say I'm God's favorite. I'm God's favorite. Yeah. Amen. I should have said that first. I'm God's favorite. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, say you are God's favorite. I'm God's favorite. No, you're supposed to say no, no, no. You're supposed to say you. You're talking about me. Because I'm God's favorite. I'm God's favorite. Amen. He, he just favors me. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I, I believe you're saying it for yourself. That he just favors, he just favors me. Amen. To God be the glory. You are God's favorite. Amen. You are highly favored in the name of Jesus. And why, why does God favor me? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. I'm not going to stand before you and say, oh, it's because I'm so good. Oh, I pray so many times. I'm not going to tell you that. It's a mystery. I wonder. And if you ask Pastor Precious, she will wonder too. Amen. To God for the glory. Hallelujah. But God loves you. And if I were to know you very well, I would wonder too. Amen. So don't laugh at me alone. It's a mystery. But God loves you. No matter what your station is in life, He loves you. And it's a mystery. Amen. Hallelujah. The Amplified said, the mystery of which was hidden for ages and generations from angels and men, but is now revealed to his holy people, us, the saints. It is revealed to us, to whom was pleased to make known how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you, the hope of realizing his glory. Mm. Thank the glory of God is the presence of God. And, and I don't have much time to go into the glory. But you remember when Moses said, show me your glory. The Bible said that the presence of God passed in front of Moses. The, the glory of God is the capote of God. The weight of God. The heaviness of God. The very essence of God. The weight of God. The presence of God. And if you have the presence of God working with you. Amen. Being with you each and every time. I need somebody to hold their heads high on. Hallelujah. No matter what the situation is. Because I got God on my side. I, I, I don't know about you. I just have that confidence that God is on my side. I just I just have that boldness that God is on my side. Yeah. When I know he's on my side, I know that I can afford to be bold. I know I can afford to say what he's saying. I know I can afford to hear from him and declare whatsoever he tells me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The message uh, says this mystery has been kept in the dark for a long time. But now it's out in the open. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know this rich and glorious secret inside out. Regardless of their background, regardless of their religious standing, the mystery in a nutshell is just this. Christ is in you. So therefore, you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It's that simple. That's the substance of our message. You remember that another portion of the Bible tells us we are partakers of the divine nature of God. It's a mystery that God will share his nature with humans. It's a mystery. But he said that mystery has been revealed to you. To you, it is no longer a mystery. It's a mystery that God loves us so much. It's a mystery. But he loves you. It's a mystery. Thank you. And that mystery must make you to be bold. That mystery must bring about a boldness in you. A boldness to declare the promises of God in your life in the name of Jesus. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's a mystery that will make you to always hope for the best in God. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your hope alive because you have hope in God. You must believe that everything is going to be all right. I hope I'm speaking to somebody today. Everything is going to be all right. It is going to be well in the name of Jesus. As you leave this place without hope in you, as you step out, you begin to get signals and things will begin to happen that will change circumstances that you thought was impossible. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. But you have to be fully persuaded like Abraham. 
that if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. You have to be bold in your hope. And you must be bold in your desire. I need somebody who is bold and who hopes in God. Give God something to walk with. Give God something to walk with. It, it may sound like God doesn't need something to work with. No, but that's not what the Bible teaches us. He needs something from you to work with. He needs something from you to work with. He has given, he has given, he has given. But he needs, he just needs a little bit of material. A little bit of material to work with. You've got to give him there. You've got to give him. Abraham had to give him something to work with. Abraham had to walk around and say, I'm a father of nations, I'm a father of nations. Even though when it appeared that this situation was hopeless, Abraham gave God something to walk with. There was a boldness in his de declaration of his hope and his desire. I need you to be bold in your hope and your desire in the name of Jesus. How many know that have boldly declared some things in this place concerning Glory House of Prayer? Can I get an amen, friend? Amen. amen. That's how I need you to be bold in declaring the things and never let the circumstances of what you see determine what you're going to say. You say what God said. You don't say what the situation says. You say what God said. God said to Abraham, you are going to have a child that is going to come through Sarah. And he continued to say it. And as he was saying it, he became a father of that child. Give God something to work with. You need to develop some hope in you. I need you to have some hope of something you may think it's impossible. But just continue to hope. In hope believing. I just believe like Abraham. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. And now this is the icing on the cake and I'm going to end with this. This is the icing on the cake. When you give God something to work with, uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, when you give God something to work with, he now says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that you ask. So you are giving him a little. All you have said is, this is my hope. This is my desire. But he's such a good father. I don't know about you, but as good parents, you want to give even more to your children. Even if they ask for one, you want to give them two. If, if you can afford it, you want to give them as much as you possibly can afford to give them. And our father owns it all. He can afford to give us whatsoever we desire and even more. So he said he will give unto us exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Let's look at that from the Amplified. Now to him who by a consequence of the action of his power that is at work with us. His power that is at work with us. His power that is at work with us. He's able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far above and far over and above all that we dare to ask or think. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. So whatsoever you are hoping for, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you are hoping for in Jesus' name. But he said it is according to the power that works in you. The power of you must hope. desire it. You must desire it. You must desire it. You must desire it. You must desire it. And let me give you a hint of where we are going next week. You must desire it that it becomes a picture in your mind. You can see it. You can see it. You can see it. I've already seen this place filled. I can see it. When I preach, I don't preach to the number that you're seeing. I preach to a full a sanctuary in the name of Jesus. I jump up and down the same way that I'm going to jump up and down when every seat is occupied in the name of Jesus. If it is one person, I'm going to preach the same way in the name of Jesus. Because because I've already seen it. You've got to get into the place that it becomes a picture in your mind. In the name of Jesus, somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let me read this and we will stand. And the message translation said, God can do anything you know. God can do anything you know. 
far above what you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. So somebody ought to be dreaming wildly. I need somebody who has some wild dreams. I need somebody who's going to share some wild dreams. Even dreams that when you tell pastor, pastor's going to be, whoa. Whoa. Yes, that's the kind of dream that I need you to have. I need you to be able to hope some things, to hope for the impossible. Man may say it is impossible, but God says it is possible. With God, all things are possible. If you can see it in your mind, oh, I shouldn't preach next week yet. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you don't want to sit another hour to, to, to hear next week. You, I know that you'll rather come back next week, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He does it not by pushing us around, but by walking within us. His spirit deeply and gently walking with us. Thank somebody you. say, Hope in God. Oh, yeah. oh, somebody say, My hope is in God. Hope is in God. Let us rise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.